Fusio again, and today I'm going to show you how to replace a bad connector on your vehicle. In this example, I'll be replacing a 9004 through 9007 headlight connector, but this process will apply to any connector you need to replace. I'll be replacing the entire connector, terminals and all, in this video. The replacement connector is known as a pigtail connector. If just the plastic connector is broken and the terminals are fine, in many cases you can remove the terminals from the old connector and insert them into a new connector, which will eliminate the need to cut the harness. Click above or check the description for a link to that video. You can either solder or crimp the wires from the harness to the wires on the replacement pigtail connector. I'll be using the crimp method. When crimping, having quality tools is critical. You want a good set of wire strippers? You'll notice they have a razor sharp edge, so they'll cut through the insulation cleanly. and a high quality ratcheting crimp tool. You'll see that the dies have been machined with a smooth edge so that they won't tear through the heat shrink tubing on the butt connectors. This is honestly the type of tool you don't want to use. These tools make a very poor quality crimp. And you'll notice when I put the jaws of this tool side by side with the jaws of the quality tool, how much thinner the jaws are. The good quality crimpers wider jaws will create a wider crimp band and a high quality crimp. The ratcheting action won't allow the jaws to release until the crimp has been fully formed. The cheap crimper will create a very narrow crimp band, not let you know when the crimp is complete, and the jaws can tear the heat shrink. A good crimp tool will form a cold weld between the wire and the barrel of the connector. If you were to cut a properly crimped connection in half, you would see that the individual copper strands are now a solid mass of copper. Pliers and vice grips aren't crimping tools. They won't form a cold weld or a reliable connection. The same goes for crimp terminals. If you have a pack of 100 you got for 5 bucks, they aren't quality terminals. For example, these Duraseal connectors cost me $4 for a pack of 8 locally. You can purchase them for less in bulk if you go through a lot of them. Before doing anything, make sure the connector you're going to be replacing isn't live. The headlamp connector on this particular vehicle isn't live as long as the headlight switch is off, so I'm fine. But if you have any doubts, you can either check the connector with a multimeter for battery power, or disconnect the negative battery terminal to be completely safe. First, cut the old connector off. You can use the wires on the old connector as a reference when installing the new one. I'm going to cut them flush with the connector so we have the most wire possible. I just grabbed the wire and slid the conduit back so I have some room to work. I like to strip the wire a bit more than necessary so I can cut it down to the proper length later. This particular wire, 16 gauge. The wire on this connector is a bit long, so I'm going to trim it. Just seeing where about I want it. That's good right there. These are the butt connectors I'm going to be using. These are heat shrink butt connectors. So after I'm done crimping them, I'm going to heat them with a heat gun. The tubing will shrink, and there's a sealant inside that will make the connections weather tight. So I have to crimp these connectors twice, once on this side, and once on the connector side. 
Make sure you use the proper butt connector and the proper crimper die for the gauge wire you're crimping, as using a terminal or die too small or large will affect the quality of the crimp. The crimper dies and crimp terminals are usually color coded. 12 to 10 AWG is yellow, 16 to 14 AWG is blue, and 22 to 18 AWG is red. Since the wire I'm working with is 16 AWG, I'll be using the blue butt connectors in the blue color coded die. You'll see when I insert the wire in, you can see copper in the bell area of the heat shrink. What you want is the wire short enough so that you don't see any of that. When you insert the wire, it should bottom out so that the insulation is flush with the crimp portion of the connector, which is right here. So you want it like this, not like this. So to deal with that, just cut a little bit of the end off the wire. and reinsert it and have a look at it. And that's good. So I'm just going to trim down the other wires to that length. That's good. What I like to do is insert the terminal into the crimping tool first, it makes it easier, especially in tight quarters like this. I just inserted it and pressed down on the handle just enough to engage the ratchet. With it in the tool then I'm going to insert the wire into the connector push it in until it bottoms out. Once it's bottomed out, just squeeze the handle. And when you squeeze it past a certain point, it'll release. And that's one half crimped. Press it in until it bottoms out, and crimp.
as is often the case when you use a pigtail connector, the wire colors on it aren't the same as the colors on the factory harness. To make sure I put the wires, I crimp the right wires on the harness to the right wires on the connector, but use the old connector as a reference. So while holding it in the same orientation with the tab facing up, from left to right I have green, black, and red with a black stripe. So the blue wire goes to the green wire, which is right here. Pushing the wire in, make sure it's bottomed out, and crimp. That's one. Now I'm going to check for the next wire. With it in this orientation, next wire will be the black wire. So yellow goes to black. And black is right here. And this is the final wire, so everything should be right, but I'm just going to check anyway. Final wire, red with a black stripe, and that's the remaining wire right here. So the black wire goes to the red wire with the black stripe. Engaging the ratcheting action of the tool, then I'll make sure the wire is pushed all the way in and crimp. And that's it. All that's left is to heat up the heat shrink with a heat gun to make these connections weather tight. I'm going to use a heat gun with this C-shaped nozzle here and I'm going to heat up this heat shrink until it shrinks to the wires and until the sealant, which is what makes these connectors weather tight, oozes out the ends all the way around. If your heat gun has two settings, set it on the lowest setting. Attach the headlight and test it out. The low beams are on, now the high beams, and we're good.